Hey, what's up guys? Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment tutorial video. Hey, check this out. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get more videos like this in the future. If you've seen in the last video, you guys know that I'm doing a Pro Tools beginner series for a lot of people who are new to Pro Tools, people who are just getting started in Pro Tools and you have no idea where to begin. I'm teaching you guys from the basics all the way up to the expert level stuff. What I showed you guys in the last video was pretty much how to create your own session template. That way that when it's time for you to record, you can have everything set up. Your number of tracks, your EQs in the session already, your dynamics like compressors or your reverbs or whatever the case may be. This is gonna be extremely beneficial when you start a session because you don't wanna keep starting the session from scratch every time you're recording for yourself or for your clients you want to go ahead and open up a template with things that you know work for you or that you utilize a lot for your clients so i'll show you how to do that with this video what i'm going to be showing you guys how to do real quick is how to import a vocal or say that you recorded the vocal and you want to know how to put like a eq or a compressor or a reverb on there now i'm not going to show you how to utilize that stuff in this video but further in the next video, but I'm just going to show you guys how to go ahead and import your plugins. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Shift control I and let's go find a vocal real quick. I'm just going to go to my downloads because I know that I downloaded a random vocal. I'm going to hit convert files. It's going to jump into this box and the sample rate matches, which is great. And we're going to hit done. We're going to use current folder, <clears throat> new track. Boom. We're good to go. This is going to be considered if you already know how to import your tracks. If you don't, it's ship control in. And that's going to give you the options, how many tracks you want to put in there. The number of tracks, mono tracks, if you're going to be recording vocals, stereo tracks, if you're going to be recording instruments. And then if you want audio, auxiliary tracks to send your vocals through, uh, audio tracks to record your vocals, master fader to be the master output of your vocals, MIDI track for MIDI information only, and then instrument track just in case you want to utilize VSTs, virtual instruments, piano, strings, bass guitars, whatever, inside of the virtual software. Okay, so we don't need any of that right now. I'm just going to assume that you already recorded your vocals. So here's your vocal. You recorded your vocal inside of Pro Tools. Let's go ahead and play it around the vocal. <clears throat> Hold me just because we're alone together. It's like, okay, great. I got a vocal. I love it. What do I do? How can I import some plugins or whatever to make my vocal sound better? Well, first off, if you are in this edit window, it might show up like this. <clears throat> with no mixer stuff to allow you to put import any cert inserts for your plugins and things like that you click this drop down arrow you go ahead and put in your inserts and that will allow you to go ahead and put some plugins in from this window if that's what you choose to do but if not hit the control equal plus button and then you just go to that vocal track once you find that vocal track which is going to be the first one imported here Here's your inserts and here's your sins. Your inserts is going to allow you to put things <clears throat> like your dynamic plugins. That's going to be more so like your de-essers and your compressors and your noise gates and your EQs and things like that. Only utilize that for that section. Your sins is going to be more for your effects process and stuff, but that's going to be more like the reverbs, the delays, the modulations, the chorus effects, whatever effects that you want to send your vocals or instrumentation through you want to utilize the sins for because it's going to use up a lot more cpu quick tip if you are utilizing the same eq compressor whatever you may be utilizing just create an aux sin track and i'll show you how to do that in the future do not stack your tracks your channels with a bunch of eq compressor reverb i mean compressor dynamics and all this stuff fill all these boxes up because your cpu is going to have an overload and you're going to get really ticked off because you're not going to be able to record your session so create an aux in put your plugins on the aux in track and then send the outputs through that aux in track and i'll show you that later but as far as the vocals let's go ahead and say okay well you want to import a eq you click this dot here you go ahead and go to eq and you have a whole list of eqs and things that you want to utilize or put in on a vocal so for you being new to pro tools you probably have your basic seven band eq so let's go ahead and choose that one 
boom, there we go. That way you can go in and, you know, make any adjustments to the EQ that you want. Now, say if you wanted to add a compressor after that, click the dot, go to plugin, go to dynamics this time. And this time we're going to add a CLA too. So let's go ahead and just listen to it for right now. Hold me just because Off. we're alone together. On. I've been wasting away on my own. I've been waiting for this. So we just to wanted to. We're not gonna make any adjustments like that, but just. Over you. Boom! You say that. Oh, oh, yes! I love that. I love this. I love the way it sounds. Now, what if you said, "Hey, but I want to add a little reverb to my track. How can I go about doing that? What do I need to do?" Well, what you'll do is go ahead and create an aux in track, or auxiliary track, or a bus track. So you just want to hit shift control in. Once you do that, you want to hold down the shift button, choose one of your track. You want to make it a stereo track. So when you make it a stereo track, if you hold down control left and right, it's going to give you stereo or mono. We're going to go for an auxiliary track with an effect of like reverb and we want it to be in stereo, two channels left and right. Uh, so we're going to make it a stereo. And then if you do up and down, it gives you the option to choose what type of track you want instrument track audio track auxiliary track master fader and midi track we want to go to an auxiliary track right so once we go to the auxiliary track this is what you can do in the process i'll go ahead and delete this one so you'll know once we have that auxiliary track created here's our auxiliary track here and i'm also going to show you this too we're going to show the track color i went ahead and click track color so we can see that Here's your auxiliary track. If you wanted to go in and change this color, you double click it and you just make it like pink or something like that. So you know what it is in the process. What you want to do now, this is where you're going to set up like your reverb, your delays, your modulations and things like that. The auxiliary track is almost like an aux master. It, it is an aux master. It's basically going to control either the reverb that you want to send your vocals through, or it's going to be if you send the output wrote route it to your aux ma master it's going to control all your vocals at the same time so once you create that aux master what you want to do first is go here for the io input and don't, not interface but you want to go to bus now usually it's going to say bus one and two three and four five and six seven eight etc mine says reverb delay and chorus effect because i've already done this in the past so what you want to do is choose the first one Make that into reverb. So bus one and two. Yours will say bus one and two. You can right click it, rename it to reverb, which mine it, it already is, but I'll just put REV, right? So then in the process, now for your auxiliary tracks, you want to put your effects processing on there. So things like um, I guess you can say like your reverb. Let's find a nice reverb. Pro Tools is gonna come with like an air reverb, so it's really simple. Choose stereo. Now, let's see if we can hear anything. Hold me just because. You can't hear any reverb right now because you're not sending the signal of your vocals through this auxiliary track. I'm going to show you how to root that right now. Another way you'll be able to know is if you see this lighting up, you'll know that you're actually getting signal. Okay, but you're not right now. So what you want to do is go ahead and go to the sins. On your auxiliary on your actual audio track not the auxiliary your audio track go down to where it says sins and you right click I mean you left click the little arrow go down to bust and then go to reverb stereo you're not gonna be able to hear anything right now because it's the actual fader is down all the way so you're not gonna be able to hear anything and I'm gonna show you that right now hold me just because you're not getting any signal into the reverb because I'm not feeding it right here. So you want to make sure that you feed it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this pre to fader and this is follow main panner, make it ready, safe, all these different things. I'll talk to you about that in further videos. But for right now, I'm just showing you how to feed the signal. So what you want to do is go ahead and click on the audio track where it says sense and bring this box up and you want to go ahead and feed the signal. Watch this. Hold me just because we're alone together. I've been wasting away on my own. 
that's how you pretty much will set it up for your auxiliary tracks now if you want to go ahead and set up a delay as well i already have one set up right now but you want to go ahead and do the same thing ship com control in you want to make it a stereo you want to make it an auxiliary track and you want to go ahead and import that once you import that track what you want to do in the process is just go ahead double click it change the color to like yellow or something like that come up here to the aux in the io input go down to bus and change it to bus one and two three and four so you use one and two for reverb we're going to use three and four for the delay this one says delay already we're going to utilize that i don't need to rename it because it's already renamed gonna go here and then i'm gonna go in and put like a delay real quick so just air delay which is something that probably multi delay which probably comes with pro tools already or you go to multi channel plugin you can do stereo or you can do mono we're going to do just like a mono real quick and we're going to go to delay and we're just going to choose something that pro tools come with mod delay three okay now check it out same concept you're not going to get any feed into the delay until you go to the second box on your audio track go to bus and then you want to go to stereo once you go to stereo make it pre to fader we're just gonna feed this before we even figure it out. We're gonna feed it. Hold me just because you see that signal? If this is down, no signal. Together. Feed it. I've been wasting away on my own. I've then you just adjust it. For this to get old. I've been trying my best to get over you. You adjust it for whatever milliseconds that you want. That's how you would set up your plugins. If you needed to go in and add anything else on your vocals, as far as your inserts for these tracks, if you wanted to go in and add like, you know, any, any auto tune or whatever the case may be, you just add those on your inserts, but do not add delay. Don't add reverb. Don't let add any modulation or anything like that. Utilize that for your effects processing through your auxiliary sins and you're going to be golden So guys, that's pretty much it for this video I really hope that this video helped you out if it did Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought Did it help you out in the process? Could I have done something more in this video to show you? Uh, how to you know work this whole entire process? I'm really trying to keep these tutorials very short and simple So you guys can continue to move forward because there's a lot of information to learn It's going to be up to you to really sit down play with it and learn as much as you can in the process But I'm going to give you all the tools that you need to get started If this video did help you please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell and share this video so I can get more likes, more comments, and I can get a lot of views and subscribers for YouTube. I am really trying my best to get to 100K subscribers on YouTube, and I really just want to do this to help you guys so you don't have to spend $100,000 to go to audio school or whatever the case may be to learn this stuff. Learn from a mentor. It's always best. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Like the